Uh, good, evening. good evening. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. It has been a while <laughs> since I was able to come and to be with you. Even though time flies, also it's good to see that the Lord is about to come. My dear friends, brothers and sisters, Jesus is just around the corner. Yes. We can see the signs every single day. Everywhere we look, you see signs. And he's crying out to us and to the world, prepare, prepare. Get ready and stay ready as well. And this is the message that he wants us to believe and to have, and then to share with the world. Yes. So this weekend, tonight and tomorrow morning, and then once again in the afternoon, I'm going to share with you what Pastor Cortez asked me to share with you. How your family and my family relate to the end of the world. Amen. And I hope that even though I'm not the best instrument, God somehow will use me in a way that is simple and plain and also powerful to reach your hearts and mine as well. So this, this um, evening, I want to share with you a passage that you know very well. It's in the heart of the Ten Commandments. Let's turn to the book of Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. And together... Let's read verses 8 to 11. That's the fourth commandment. And this is what it says. He says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay. Don't forget that word, holy. Is the Sabbath holy? Yes. That's why. Only holy people can keep the Sabbath holy. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you know where I'm going with this one. If we are not holy, can we keep the Sabbath holy? No. no. Is God holy? Yes. He made it holy? Yes, the Sabbath. Is He able and willing to make us holy as well? Amen. The yes, there is enough power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Yes. There is power to cleanse us Amen. and also power to overcome sin for Amen. good. So that's why the first commandment says, remember to keep it holy. Because God will have a people, holy people, that will keep the Sabbath holy. Amen. Amen. Not just in heaven, here on planet Earth. Amen. Okay? I continue reading. It says, six days shall thou labor, and do all thy Work. How many days? Six. To do what? Work. To do whatever we need to do. To get ready for what? For Sabbath. for Sabbath. You know, people today, they would love to know when Jesus is coming. But God has not revealed that information to us. But imagine, if we cannot be ready for Sabbath, knowing that it's the seventh day of the week and the time of the day that it begins Will we be ready for Jesus' second coming? No. So if we cannot get ready for Sabbath on time, how can we be ready for Jesus when he comes back? So what is Sabbath? It's a day of rest for holy people, but also it's a day that tells us that God is the creator and the sustainer Amen. and the redeemer as well. Also, it's a day that tells us that we have a high holy priest up in heaven doing a work for you and for me Amen. as well. Six days shall thy labor. I continue reading and, and it says, But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, Stop there for a minute. What institution do we find in the fourth commandment? The family. the family institution. So the Sabbath 
and the family, are they related then? Yes. yes, they are. Where do we find them? Right in the Ten Commandments. Amen. Where in the Ten Commandments? Right in the Fourth Commandment. Is, is the Fourth Commandment the seal of the living God? Amen. Yes, and God is going to seal who? People. people. What kind of people? People that come out of families. Families will be sealed at the end of time with the seal of the living God. So we can have happy family, but holy family, and then we can keep the Sabbath holy. Amen. Do we see a relationship between the family and the Sabbath? Yes. yes. Let me read it to you from this book, Adventist Home. Do you have this book? Yes. yes. Have you ever read it? Okay, if you read it, and I have twice, by the way, now we need to put it in practice. Because this book, the title, is to prepare families for the advent. That's what this book is all about. It's preparing family for Jesus' second coming. Let me read to you a statement in page 341. It says, when God pronounced all things very good. When was that? In the creation. Then marriage. Let me write that down. That's it. What page was that? 341. 341. What was the number one institution? Marriage. Marriage. Okay. Give me another word for marriage. Covenant. Well, you're right, but I'm looking for this one. Family. 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 That's the number one institution. Okay? I continue reading. What, uh, what chapter is that? It says 56. 56, okay. Five, six. The title of it is Divorce. It says, when God pronounced all things very good, then marriage and the Sabbath. What was the second institution? Sabbath. Sabbath. Okay had their origin. Twin institutions for the glory of God in the benefit of humanity. So what is family for? I just read it to you. For the glory God. of God, and number two, for the benefit God. of humanity. Every single People should benefit by your family and by my family. And, and then every family or marriage should glorify God. Okay? I'm going to continue reading to you. So Sabbath is for what also? For the glorification of God and for the benefit of humanity or mankind. Before I continue reading, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna ask you something. At the marriage and the Sabbath of the family are under attack by Satan. Yes, yes or no? Yes. 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 Is that attack increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Very well. You're alive. Of the two institutions, which one was the first one attacked? In the Garden of Eden. Marriage. Marriage. Not the Sabbath. When man fell into sin, and God came about asking him what happened. By the way, did God knew what happened? Yes. Of course he did. What was God teaching then? The investigative judgment. He was investigating what was happening even though he knew what was happening. So we see the beginning right in the Bible on the investigative judgment. God finding out what happened. Not because he did not know, but Adam and Eve needed a savior. And only when you acknowledge or I acknowledge that I'm a sinner, then I have, sense of, I have a sense of the need of Jesus in my life. Amen. When he came around asking questions, who was the first one that he was asking questions from? Adam. It wasn't Eve. 
who was the first one that sinned. He, however, when he came, he was not asking her, what have you done? When he came around, he was asking Adam, what happened? So here we have, we have a, a good point that I want to make this, this evening. When God comes, who's going to be the one that he's going to be talking to as number one? Men, men. 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 Why? Because we are the head of the household, right? And because we are the head of the household, who is responsible for the household? Men. The father. The husband. If you want to fix America, you would have to go to the White House, right? Mm -hmm. Who are you going to talk in the White House? The president. Why? Because he's the head of the nation. You would not talk to me. I, I would not do any good. You're talking to me. You need to, God, to, you need to talk to the president. So when, when he comes, he's going to be asking me and every man here, what have you done with your family? Did he talk to, uh, to Eve as well? Yes. yes, he did. Then ladies, you're going to be asking questions as well. What have you done? When, when he asked Adam what happened, Adam blamed the woman. the woman. See, there was already a problem here. He was telling God, God, you are the one to blame because you gave me that woman. <laughs> Instead of Eve, you would have given me Mary or Teresa, who knows what. I would have done better. Yeah. But because of that troublemaker, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm now in a crisis. There was already what? Tension, conflict, division, guilt in the human heart. Amen. Then when he asked the woman, what happened? She said, well, the serpent. At the end of the day, what they were saying is, God, you are the one to blame. You gave me a wife and you created the serpent, so you are the guilty one. That's why we see that the marriage institution was the number one institution that was under attack. Let me continue. This we find in chapter 3 of Genesis, by the way. What do we find in chapter 4 of Genesis? We see two brothers. <coughs> Cain and then Abel. See, when, when Satan attacks the family or the marriage, what he's hoping for is to create tension, division, because parents, I'm one of them, we are the wall of protection around our children. They are, they are little. They don't know anything. So, so God placed them, little tiny human beings, in a family so they can grow and be protected and taken care of and looked after by the parents, right? Amen. However, if that wall of protection is being destroyed little by little, what is happening eventually to the ones in the middle of that circle? There's no protection. So when Adam and Eve were in a crisis in their marriage, eventually Satan was able to attack the two children they had with no opposition whatsoever. And I, and I want you to think about this because this is what is happening today. The parents... They, be, they begin to have problems at home. They don't get alone. They, you know, problems. What is happening to our world protection is coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. To the point that eventually the little ones in the middle have no protection whatsoever. And you see that in the society that we're in today. Mom and dad, they are too busy. 
whether he's making money or having a good life or whatever they want to do. They are too busy. And not only they are too busy, eventually, you know, when they, mar get, they get married, they are together. Eventually, they go their own way. And there's no protection for the little ones at home. So Satan comes and tears them apart piece by piece. What happened 6,000 years ago is still happening today. Okay. If he destroyed this institution by de facto, what other institution he's destroying? Because the Sabbath was made for man, man not the other way around. If there's no man, no woman to worship God, and to be holy people, how can they keep the Sabbath holy? Can happen. Can happen. That's why you see that the family and the Sabbath, we just read it. This is God talking to us, saying that the two institutions are twin institutions. And both of them are to glorify God, but also to benefit humanity. This is, uh, this is time. Okay. What event are we waiting for? Second coming. Second coming. Do we agree with that? Yes. Okay. Let's say we're here. Okay. Before the second coming, what has to take place that is very important? Let me put it, okay. Now, you're right, Sunday law. Sunday national law, okay. Uh, and then after that, colossal provision. Yes. Okay? So we are right here. This is the present. In the near future, we have to face a national Sunday law. Is that law related to this institution? Yes. Yes. Is that law the final test? Yes. After that law comes some time, we don't know how long it's going to be. Even though you have people today trying to set dates, don't fall for that. They are speculating. That's right. God has not revealed that to us. Then eventually comes the close of probation. Mm -hmm. Can we prepare after the close of probation? We as a people, can we prepare as a people after the national Sunday law? No. no. Because I'm just going to, let me, let me read it to you. This is the great controversy, 605. It says, the Sabbath, this is the second institution, the Sabbath will be the great test of loyalty. So what is the Sabbath at the end of time? Great it's a test. When do you prepare for a test? Before the test or after the test? <laughs> what happens if you wait until the test comes to prepare? Fail. You fail miserably, right? <coughs> okay? So God is telling us this is a test. Okay? For it is the point of truth, especially Controverted. When the final test, what test is it? The national Sunday law. Yeah. Is the national is the, what the final test? I just read it to you. This is not my opinion. God is telling us what we need to know. It says when the final test shall be brought to bear upon man, then the line of distinction will be drawn between those who serve God and those who serve Him not. Amen. So this is a test, right? Yes. And here we know what? We know the final test. The test. Not only we know the final test, we know the question on the test. Amen. What is that question? 
loyalty to God. All right? That's why. Are we going to be serving God then or not? So if this is the final test, how many tests will come after this? None. None. So this is not a time for us to prepare. Because the first people who are taking the test is the people of God, you and I. Amen. Not the world. People in Babylon, they had not heard the three angels' messages. Amen. Because those messages are the only message that will prepare the people for the final test. They have no idea. But you and I do. So when the test comes, you and I are the first one to take the test. And if you fail the test, you fail. And you cannot retake the class, by the way. Because this is the final test. How many tests after the final test? None. Zero. So this is the final test. However, every day we have a quiz. If we fail the quiz, can we pass the final test? No. Friends, this is important. If I, can, if, I, if I cannot get along with my wife, if I cannot be a godly man at home, well, godly woman, if you cannot get along with your husband, or we cannot be nice and kind to our children, on the other hand, have, a, have rules in, at home, if we cannot... If we cannot pass that quiz, which is a daily quiz, because we're there every single day, right? Amen. Can we pass the final quiz? No. no. Is Satan attacking right now the Sabbath or the family? Right now? The family. The family. Eventually, he will attack what? The Sabbath. the Sabbath. Right now, he's attacking the family. How do we know? Just look what is happening in society. When you see that homosexual agenda moving forward and being legalized, and even they having privilege that you and I do not have, you know that's the final attack against this institution. I'm going to give you an example, right out, there, out of the Bible. What happened when the Sodomites knocked at the door of the remnant mm -hmm. that night in Sodom? That was the last night that they had. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was it. I mean, homosexuality has been going on for a long time in Sodom. If you read, that's Genesis 19, by the way. It says, from the little guy, to the, from the youngest to the oldest, they were there that night. Every one of them. And you know that Lot did not call 911. He did not call the police. Why not? Because they, what they were doing was legal. They were not breaking any human law. The police would have never come to do anything because what they were doing, it was okay. Isn't, isn't that the case today? When that movement knocked at that door, and the Bible says that Lot was a just man. He was part of the remnant. He was faithful to God. When that movement there to knock at that door that night, and be known to them, that was the last night for them on planet Earth. That was it. By the way, that movement is also knocking at your door, at my door. That movement is knocking at the Adventist church worldwide. Yeah. That, movement, that movement is knocking in every university that we have and every college and even the high school and the elementary school. That movement is knocking at the door every hospital and clinic that we have today. Yeah. That should tell us that should tell us, and I'm going to repeat myself, that should tell us that we're very close to that. 
the attack on the number one institution is a clear sign that Satan is getting ready and about to attack the South through the national Sunday law. The question is then, do I need to go home and prepare for the final test? Where is the only place I can, that I can prepare for the final test? Ah, that's the only place. Let, let me read it to you. If I can find it. <laughs> yeah, right, right here. I'm reading from the book Adventist Home says, our, ho our work for Christ is to begin with the family in the home. Amen. So where do we start working for Christ? In your home, in my home. It's, it's, it says our work for Christ is to begin in the church. No, that's not what it says. It's to begin my Loma Linda. That's not what it says. It's to begin an educational institution. That's not what it says. It says our work, your and mine, is to begin with the family in the home. Amen. Amen. In the home. So here is where we need to prepare for this. Yes. And if we're failing here, friends, it's a clear sign that, that we will fail here as well. That's why Satan is attacking the family. He's not yet concerned about the Sabbath. It's only the grace of God that is holding the wings. See, Satan would love to have a, a national Sunday law tonight. You know why? He would, he would wipe us out. He would wipe us out as a people. There will be no one standing tonight. So God says, no, no, not yet, not yet. Angels hold the wings amen, amen. until my people are sealed, until I have families that I can seal on the forehead. Then and only then the wings will be loosed. Don't forget the sealing is a process. It's not an event. And the loosening of the wings is a process as well. It doesn't happen in just one day. It's a process. I'm asking you this question tonight. Do we see the loosening of the wings today? Yeah. Do we see Satan taking more and more control on this little tiny planet? Yep. Right. From the political world, to the social world, to the financial world, to the, the educational world, to the medical world, to the calamities that are happening in the world today. So that tells us that that process of loosening the wind has already begun. We should tell us that God is also in the process of knowing who he will seal in the near future. The question is, is it you? Is it me? Serious time, friends. We cannot play game anymore. That, that would be a crime if we continue playing church. Coming here once a week, listening to wonderful truth, but there's not much going on here. When this devil is destroying every single family that he can destroy. Let me read to you another statement from the book, Education. This one is found in page 250. It says, the Sabbath and the family were alike instituted in Eden. And in God's purpose, they are indissolubly linked together. How they are? Linked how they link indissolubly. They cannot be separated. In the purpose of God, not your purpose or mine, he linked the Sabbath and the family to the point that they cannot be what? Separated. separated. By destroying one, 
is hoping to destroy the only one, the, only, the, the, the other one, because there will be no people that will be holy to keep the Sabbath holy. But let me tell you, Satan once again will be defeated. Amen. When you read the three angels' messages, at the end says that God will have a people that keep his commandments. Amen. Every one of them. But also, when we come to the end of the Old Testament, the book of Malachi, it says, before I come, I will send you who, who, that he will restore family. He will turn the hearts of the, fire, of the parents to the children, and then the hearts of the children to the fathers. God has promised that he will restore families and the Sabbath. Yeah. That's why I can tell you 100% that the enemy once again will be defeated. Because what God says, he does. Because he has the power to make it happen. The question is, are we connected to that divine power that the devil cannot undo, cannot destroy, cannot sever? Are we connected to that divine power that is almighty? Amen. So we can be restored. Because only restored people can restore the Sabbath. If we have not been restored, God cannot use us to restore the Sabbath. The Ten Commandments. Is that a reflection of the character of God? Amen. The fourth commandment talks about the Sabbath and the family, right? We just read it. You, your son... And your daughter. What is the fifth commandment all about? Honor. It's a family. The sixth commandment, what is it all about? Preserving life. Whose life? God is immortal. You cannot kill God. So that, that commandment doesn't, doesn't refer to God. It doesn't apply to God because you cannot kill God. It's you and I protecting life. Family. The seventh commandment is about keeping the purity, the morality in the home. No immorality, no adultery, fornication, or whatever. The eighth commandment is protecting the property of the family. Don't take what is not yours. The eighth commandment, the ninth commandment, don't bear false witness. Protecting the reputation of the family. And the 10th commandment says, you are, you are, your neighbor, his wife, and his property, don't covet. Even if they have more than you have, don't covet. I'm taking care of them. I'll take care of you as well. Amen. So from the 5th commandment to the 10th commandment, every single rule, every single commandment has to do with the protection of the family. Because then, and only then, God will have a people that will restore the Sabbath. Let me read to you another statement. Reading from the same book, this, there is no missionary field more important than the family. You don't have to go to Africa or Asia to be a missionary. You are already a missionary in your home. The only question is what kind of missionary work you're doing. Is it glorifying God and benefit other people? Or is it the other way around? Testimonies, Volume 7, 131, says heaven is to begin on this earth. Amen to that. Amen. So before we get to heaven, we're going to have a little heaven where? I continue reading. They, that's family members, they will make a heaven below in which to prepare for the heaven above. Where do we prepare for heaven? Where do we prepare for the national Sunday law? Where do we prepare for 
the close of probation. Where do we prepare for Jesus' second coming? At home. At home. You might be saying to now, well, Pastor, uh, my, 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 my home is not heaven, but it's no hell. Wait a minute. Do you believe in purgatory? That's not in the Bible, friend. It's even becoming a little heaven every day more and more, or it's becoming every day a little, little more like hell. Revelation 18. You had the loud cry there, right? Revelation 18.1. It's a mighty angel coming from heaven. That's not an angel, by the way. Angel means a messenger. That's Christ coming with power to give more power and empower the three angels' messages and finish the work right here between the national son of the Lord and the cross of probation. Now, now the, the, the people that, that go through the national son of the Lord, that made it, that, they made it through the national son of the Lord, now the latter rain will follow upon them. And they will give the loud cry. Because not only they know the message, had knowledge, they have a practical knowledge of the matter. It's hard religion that they have, which is also home religion that they have. Amen. Then, and only then, God will have a people that will go to every tribe, nation, and every single corner of this world. Not just telling them what they need to know, showing them what the grace of God has done for them and in them. And many people say, that's, that's what I need. That's what I want. They will see Christ in his people that have made heaven already a reality here on earth. And that's heaven that is already real on planet earth. Then and only then he will have a people to finish the work. But when that mighty angel comes, there will be no churches open anymore. There will be no educational institution anymore. We have been told that every college, university, school that we have will be closed. Every one of them. And the work that they are doing today is very hard and closed and open. The only institution that will be alive and functioning will be the number one institution that he made in Eden. That mighty angel will dwell in your home, will dwell in my home. Amen. To finish the work. I want to share with you another statement. This one is taken from Testimonies, Volume 6. Page 356, and it has to do with the Sabbath and the famine. It says, there is another work that should receive attention on the preparation day. What day of the week is the preparation day? Friday. Friday. It's in, it's, by the way, it's not the only day to prepare. It's the day to finish preparation. That's why the fourth commandment says, Remember. So when the sunset comes to an end on Sabbath, what are we to do? We need to begin preparing for next Sabbath. If we wait until Friday to, to, to get for, ready for Sabbath, friends, we're going to be so tired on Sabbath morning, there is no way that we can make it here on time. That's why I said remember. On Sunday, on Monday, on Tuesday, every single day we're getting ready, 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 ready. And then come Friday is the last day of preparation. And then that preparation ends that day. It says there's another work that should receive attention on preparation day. On this day, all differences between brethren, whether in the family or in the church, should be put away. So when we're getting ready for Sabbath, we need to put away whatever happened during that week. They have what I said or what I did, offensive. Hurt, harmed other people. I need to ask forgiveness. Amen. Because the Sabbath is holy, right? Yes. So we need to be holy to receive and welcome the Sabbath. And then the Sabbath will be a blessing. Amen. 
But if I mistreated my wife or my children or the other way around, oh, we need to take care of that before the Sabbath comes. Let all bitterness and wrath and malice be expelled from the soul. Amen. Amen. All bitterness. When someone hurt me, what happens to my heart, to my corner heart? It's bitter. I want to get even, right? No, put it away. Spell it from the heart. Wrath and malice. In a humble spirit, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. What does God want to do for us on Sabbath? Heal us. Not just physical healing. Mental healing. Emotional healing as well. If there was something going on that was wrong during the week, when it comes Friday evening, I need to put it away. I said, why forgive me? I talked to you in a way that was not appropriate, or son or daughter, forgive me. Perhaps it's not what I did to them, but how about they saw me kicking the dog? Is that good news to the little puppy? No, no because gospel means good news, and the good news is for everybody, even the pets. <laughs> if my children see me kicking the little puppy, the son or daughter, forgive me for ki you know, kicking the little puppy. That's not appropriate. So the Sabbath has a real meaning. It's a day of healing, relationship, broken hearts, broken spirits, broken minds. And Jesus had the power to do it. Amen. But we need to come to him before the Sabbath comes and says, Jesus, heal me. But also wife or husband or daughter, whatever. Let's put this away. I did wrong. I hope next week, by the grace of God, that will not happen. You know, they're going to be looking for the Sabbath to come again. Because every Sabbath, there will be more healing. More healing. We'll be closer to Jesus, but closer to each other as, as well. As, as well. As well. <clears throat> it's time to finish. Before I finish, we'll, we'll continue this tomorrow. Right here we are. The national of the law is the final test. There is no more test after that. And it's the next event in Bible prophecy. Are you with me? What happens here will determine what happens here. If we fail here, we're not going to be ready for what? And if we pass this final test, then we are sealed. And then the latter rain will fall upon those sealed people and they will finish the work. So my preparation is not for Jesus' second coming. Your preparation and my preparation is for the final test. Mm -hmm. And if we believe that Jesus is coming soon, which I hope we do, yeah. then we have really we have less time than we would think. Because this is it. And to pass this final test, we must have the character of Jesus. Amen. Amen. If we don't have that character, we will not pass the final test. Amen. See, the final test is not a written test. It's not a bunch of questions on a piece of paper. Take the test. No, that's not the final test. The final test has to do with character. And if we have Jesus' character because we have benefited from his righteousness imputed and imparted, forgiveness and sanctification, then he will give us the power to pass the final test. Amen. But do you know that very few Seventh-day Adventists will pass the final test? Mm -hmm. yeah. Very few. The majority of the people that will pass the final test are in Babylon. 
right now. And that will take place here. See, the loud cry is not for us to prepare. It's for us to give. The loud cry is for the Babylonians to prepare. So they, they will have a, an understanding of righteousness, righteousness by faith as we find it in Christ. Then they will have to make an informed decision at that point. For God or against God. So you and I are the first one to take the final test. While the people in the world, we have a little more time to pass or not pass the final test. What I want to share with you to finish is the fact that if we are sealed, then that's seal cannot be removed. Amen. But if we receive the mark of the beast, that mark cannot be removed. The moment that we receive one of the two will remain forever. Remember what happened in Esther time? Remember when, when she was pleading for his people before the king? Please do away with that decree. So I cannot do away with it. Once that decree is done and sealed, it cannot be done away with. It cannot be removed. So the sealing and the mark of the beast will seal some people forever or will mark some people forever. The destiny has been decided. And there's no way that can be reversed. Let me, let me show you one more example. Of what I'm trying to share with you this evening. Let's, if you have your Bible, turn your Bibles to 2 Kings. The book of 2 Kings. Chapter 23. 2 Kings, chapter 23. Verse 7. And this is Josiah, King Josiah. And the reformation that he was trying to inspire among the people of God in his time. It says, and he, as King Josiah, break down the houses of who? Who were the sodomites? The homosexuals. Sodomite comes from what word? Wow. Sodom. And he break down the houses, not just one, houses of the sodomites. Look, listen. That were where? By the house of the Lord. Who were the women wove hangings for the girl. Where were the houses of the Sodomites? By the house of the Lord. Okay. Right. Let me read to you another one. Second Kings 23, 5. We see, we're going to see right now that Sunday keeping and the homosexual movement are linked together as the family and the Sabbath are linked together. And he, that's the king, put down the idolatrous priest, whom the kings of Judah have ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places around about Jerusalem. Them also that burn incense and to Baal, what else? The to the sun, Sunday, and to the moon, and to the planets, and to all the host of heaven. So he destroyed the house of the Sodomites. But also he destroyed what else? The places of worship to the sun. Sunday means the day of, of the sun. So we see that the homosexual movement is linked. 
to the National Sunday Law. And as King Josiah did, he restored the family. But before, I mean, the Sabbath, but before restoring the Sabbath, he restored the family. That's what you and I need to do. Go home and say, God, by the grace of God, Amen. as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. No matter what they say, no matter what they do to us, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. May God bless us, friends. May, may, may we go home inspired tonight. Amen. To restore the family. So God can use us to restore the Sabbath. Amen. See you in the morning. God will it. Can I ask one question, Pastor? Yes. When does Satan come down to personate Christ? On that timeline you have there. <laughs> there, as far as I know, there are two positions. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which one is the right one, though. One is that he will that he will come after the class of prevention. The other one that that, that he will come before the national Sunday law. Right. So, the we'll the we'll find out. I believe the second one you said. I, I think that's very soon. Yeah, perhaps it is. Yes, ma'am. Right. That's right. So in, in my humble opinion, for whatever it's worth, I think it's not here. It's more likely over here. But that's, that's my position. Right. I'm not a prophet, but son of a prophet. So <laughs> don't quote me. <laughs> that's that's my, 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 my personal position. Okay? Well, God willing, we'll, we'll have a wonderful night. And then we'll be back once again, 9.30 in the morning, Sabbath school, and then... We have part two oh, amen. Of, of what God wants to do for us and in us as we restore the Sabbath and become or remain faithful to God. Amen. Do we finish with prayer or yes. son? Yes. Let's prayer? Pray. Okay. Let's, let's be as far as possible to pray. <coughs> Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. What a savior, Amen. what a friend, Amen. what a high priest. The land of God that takes away the sins of the world. Jesus, this, this evening as we come to the end of the meeting, I ask, I plead that your righteousness will be applied to us abundantly. Amen. That we will have a new heart, a heart that is willing to follow you and only you. That we have the mind of Jesus where every thought is captive to the obedience of Christ. Amen. Father, I pray that this little congregation will be or will become or will continue to be a beacon of light in this community. Amen. That many people in this Southern California conference or, 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 or territory will see that there is power in the gospel. That he has the power to restore what Satan has desired and tried to destroy. But Jesus came to undo what Satan did. Amen. Amen. Give us your grace. Thank you, Lord. And also give us a heart that is willing to follow you. Amen. Take care of us as we go home. And bless us to tomorrow. No matter where we go. That we will be a blessing to others. And also that we will receive your blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.